Hey guys, Chris with Minxie.com. I'm super duper excited after a small blip in the space-time continuum to show off uh, Magic Leap 2 and uh, we've got a brand new unit here that we're going to unbox. I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences between this device and the original ML1, uh, which we've been working with for a couple of years now. It happens to be our favorite augmented reality device on the market in terms of its ability to display content as if we're together in the real world. And ML2 sort of takes it to the next level, uh, not sort of, it truly does. Let's drill into it a little bit and talk about what the differences are. Just quickly, if you remember, uh, ML1 looks like this. Um, it's got kind of a rounded design. Uh, a lot of people criticized it for having a, a, a limited uh, view in terms of the artificial content, but frankly, um, given the kind of experience that this is able to project into your eyes, it's pretty impressive. The ML2 almost doubles that field of view. Uh, this is, um, you know, it's a little bulky, although it's lighter than other devices that are on the market presently. And it's got some nice features, like it does have uh, the processing offloaded to a puck that you can put on your belt or your pocket. We like that because it keeps the head off your, uh, the heat off your head. But ML2 has sort of taken that to the next level. So what's cool about the ML Tool device, uh, first of all, is that they've sort of changed the footprint of the box uh, a little bit, just in terms of how they're shipping it. What's nice about that is if you have a lot of units to work with, if you're in a uh, training facility or using it in an enterprise setting, frankly, they're easier to stack and manage, uh, a little bit easier to sort of keep control of the inventory. So let me open up the packaging here and let's take a look inside. So this is the ML2. Again, the box is a little bit more manageable. Uh, we'll put that on the side for right now. Let's open it up and take a look at what's inside. First thing I'll notice is the case. Uh, what's really nice about this is that the whole device and the controller fit in here nicely. It's very portable and compact. You can actually uh, link this to a backpack or carry it alongside a briefcase or some other uh, sort of bag if you need to carry extra equipment. And if we open it up inside, uh, you'll see that we get the device and the controller and the puck and not much else. What's nice about this is that uh, the battery on this device lasts for uh, a number of hours. You know, we've got to the point where we can sort of charge it up in between uses and don't have to worry about too much about getting it charged throughout the day. Uh, and it does come with charging pucks. I guess before we get too deep into the device itself, I'll just note that in the box we've got a fit kit, just like with ML1. Uh, some additional strapping that we can use to stabilize the device depending on how you prefer to wear it and a carrying strap uh, there's a strap for the controller two chargers uh, these are uh, the same spec as our understanding as the previous magic leap chargers so if you have spares around that's convenient use the standard usb cables to connect and uh, we got a couple of power cords here so not much to it a complete kit ready to roll what's really cool though is the fact that a carrying case is included uh, with the M01, you had to buy that extra, and it was it's nice from um, a protective perspective, but the way it was shaped physically was difficult to use uh, in terms of stacking them, and it didn't always fit uh, necessarily in a business setting. This is a little bit more enterprise grade, both in its design and in its utility, and so that's fantastic. Now, if we take a look inside, this is the, the gravy, if you will. Um, first of all, uh, the first thing I'll notice is that the Magic Leap device itself is uh, a lot smaller, leaner, and more lightweight. So let me take this wrapper off the cord here. This is truly a brand new unit. Uh, and so you'll see that just physically, uh, it's a smaller size as compared to the ML1, uh, a lot lighter, even though it's got a more capable field of view, has the same core functionality in terms of sensors and its ability to detect the real world and for us to be able to drive experiences that are a mix of the real physical space and content that we deliver that's relevant to your business or charge in life. Uh, and we do that with Make C and Catapult, by the way. But this is the device that allows us to deliver the most realistic experience, uh, experience you can imagine um, as it relates to your first person, first hand view. 
Uh, I can put you in a location that we can't travel to together. We can experience content as if we're there firsthand at pretty much any scale, whether it's tabletop or life-sized. And we can experience that content together, speak to each other and point out areas of interest or importance and even document those to be able to go back and revisit them. Uh, lots of other cool stuff. But the point is that what makes it possible is this device. Uh, this allows us to look through lenses of the real world. In fact, I'll pop it on my head here. And then it projects uh, additional content in, that arrives in my eyes in a way that I perceive as being viscerally real um, in terms of its depth and dimensionality and the way that it interacts with the real world. And what makes the Catapult do is make it very easy for you to put content that's relevant to your business or your organization or your charge in life into devices like Magic Leap so that we can share it with our audience. So uh, I'll, one thing I'll tell you about this device is that just in terms of the real world field of view, I have uh, more view of the outside just looking through the lenses perceptively as compared to the ML1. But in addition, the projected content on top is also uh, a much larger display footprint. So um, we can project experiences that can be uh, a range of large scale content or even an immersive experience if that's useful. The other really fantastic thing about ML2 is that it does dynamic occlusion of the real world. So with uh, this style of augmented reality device, if you think about it, the, what it's really doing is using additive light to spray onto my retinas in a way that I perceive as being part of the real world. And the downside to that is that black is actually see-through. And so if you create mixed reality experiences that have a lot of black in them, then I, I either intend to see that space or do it in such a way that I sort of trick the brain into thinking that it's black. Well, with Magic Leap 2, it has a filter in front that actually uses dynamic occlusion to clip those black spaces out so that if I choose to, we can make them a true black or use it in order to provide a more immersive experience if we're mixing content that happens to surround me or that I've walked inside of, for example. So just a couple of the real benefits of this new, uh, this new version of this device. The other thing I'll tell you is that the battery lasts longer. Uh, comparatively speaking, we probably get, uh, depending on what we're doing, anywhere from a third to a half more lifetime out of it as compared to Gen 1. Um, this is just from our personal first-hand experience doing a lot of heavy development on the platform. Uh, it's a little bit cooler, and it's certainly lighter and more comfortable to wear for extended periods of time. And I, one of the things I really like about it is that when you're looking through the lenses, the real world is much brighter and crisper. Uh, the M01 sort of felt like you were wearing some uh, sunglasses, and in certain settings that can be, uh, you know, it creates a sense of darkness. Uh, with this, everything looks bright and sharp in terms of my real world space, and then the content that's projected on top is, is that much brighter. In fact, we've had to uh, be careful of the fact that when we have this turned up with high brightness um, to project very bright spaces, not that it will do damage, but that it just, it's so powerful in terms of its ability to sort of compete with real world lighting scenarios and even in some cases outdoor scenarios, although it's not necessarily uh, purpose built for that, that we can um, project experiences that are on par and that your light, your eyes perceive as being uh, real. Really fantastic. So in addition to the headset, we've got the puck, which is uh, about the same size as the original. Uh, it's lightweight, it fits in my pocket or on my belt and it uh, runs for a pretty long period of time. We're able to get several hours of operation out of it without plugging it in. Uses a standard USB-C uh, connection in order to connect and charge. And the device does come with a couple of uh, dynamic power supplies that will charge both the, the headset and the controller. Uh, the controller itself is very similar to the original in terms of inputs. It's got uh, bumper and trigger buttons and a couple of home and menu buttons, which we use in a way that's very uh, intuitive and easy to manage. And then it's got this control pad, which allows me to do things like gestures and it's pressure sensitive. And we use all of those inputs to make it easy for you to be able to lay out content for your audience uh, that you're already generating, 3D models, digital twins, video, PDFs, and other assets in a way that uh, creates a space that we can use to teach and explain and sell and influence. Uh, and it is uh, as easy as posting your content and jumping into mixed reality and setting this content up. Magically 2 makes it happen. Uh, Catapult and MakeSee, which is our product, is what makes it easy to publish your content on these devices. And um, this is a more effective way to engage your audience and help them understand what it is that you have to share. Uh, we're so excited for what this uh, device does in terms of its 
its display capabilities, and now you have a way to get content that's really relevant on, to your audience into these devices to take them on a journey, uh, to teach and compel, and to create new business efficiencies. So the other thing is that uh, the, the price on this device and the software that it takes to produce this is becoming very easy to justify in terms of tying it back to ROI, and also being able to experiment with what experiences make most sense for your business or your charge uh, by experimenting with different use cases, the reality that is that this thing can be used for all sorts of stuff, explaining, teaching, uh, supporting somebody who's in another location, and depending on how you operate and the kinds of collateral that you're producing, you may find that there's some sweet spots where this stuff applies immediately, uh, either to create new revenue or drive efficiency or uh, stop loss and prevent things from happening that are bad. Uh, and to do it in a way that allows you to sort of get deeper into this technology incrementally in a way that's cost justified and responsible to your organization. When you get your hands on this device firsthand, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is be able to share content on it that's relevant to your audience. Give us a ring at MakeC and we're here to help make that happen. We'll even help you do your first experience uh, at no cost. We wanna show you how this stuff works. So look, this is a better way to communicate. This is a better way to influence and compel and sell and excite your audience and engage them. And the beauty of it is when you use MakeSee and Catapult, which is our content management platform and mixed reality client that runs on Magic League 2, we're able to give that audience a firsthand experience like nothing they've ever experienced before. We can take them on a journey to another location, show them equipment and facilities that we can't visit together in the real world, interact with content as if it's their firsthand and part of our real experience, and uh, explain and demonstrate and compel in a way that nobody's ever been able to do before. A video doesn't even begin to scratch the surface in terms of uh, how, it, how it matches up to doing things in AR. The beauty of it is that Magic Leap makes that uh, cost efficient, accessible um, uh, means for me to communicate with my audiences and to do it uh, as part of my regular workflow and to do it in a way that's easy to justify financially in the business. Not just because the price point on these is reasonable, it's like buying a, a laptop, but also because uh, it, I can get into this and experiment with where it applies in my business based on um, the readiness of my own organization. Do I have content that I can already use? How do I engage my customers? What sort of things do I do inside my operation where AR technology can create new opportunities to drive new dollars, uh, create new savings, prevent us from making mistakes? All of that's on the table. And frankly, with each business, the opportunities are a little different. It's the same basic use cases, but where you are in terms of the life cycle of your operation and how this might apply, whether it's to end, uh, engage your customers or to create new opportunities in the way that your business operates. That's part of what we're here, we're here to do is to help advise you on that, think about what you have to work with, where those investments make the most sense and allow you to really explore and figure out ways to apply this in, in a way that's differentiating, gets you ahead of the competition, makes life easier and more fun and engaging. Uh, it, it's all, all the potential is there. So it really boils down to how you apply the technology. Uh, these devices are fantastic, but the trick is to get content that's relevant to your audience onto these devices. That's what MakeC and Catapult do. So check us out at MakeC.com. And we can't wait to see what you do. Go make something.